Hello, this is Matthew Harrington with Dell Technologies. Today I'm going to cover a brand new tool Dell has, which you can find on our Client Command Suite homepage. If you go to a browser and type in dell.com forward slash and the word command, you'll get to our splash page here and the tool I'm going to cover today is called Endpoint Configuration. If we click Get Started, the tool in question is the Dell Command Endpoint Configurator or Configure for Microsoft Intune. This does require you have .NET 6.0 installed. The machine has to be enrolled in Intune and of course it has to be Windows 10 or later. But this provides a way to configure and secure the BIOS on Dell computers. And I'm going to go over how this works. So obviously the first thing you do is you download it. Once it's downloaded, you have the MSI and you come up to Intune. Once we're in Intune, we go to Apps, All Apps, and we would say Add. Now I've already added this particular package to save time, but you can see it right here. Dell Command Endpoint Configure for Microsoft Intune. It is a Windows MSI line of business app. And if we click on this and go to our properties, you can see how you install it. In a previous video, I went over calling EXEs and PowerShell scripts, which you actually have to specify PowerShell on the command line if you're going to call one. Because this is a native MSI, you actually do not have to specify MSI exec.exe on the command line. You simply can put the switches that the MSI supports. So in this case, I have slash QN to make it quiet, and then I always like to create a log file. I create mine in C temp. You could direct your log files to any location that you want. I have a scope tag and I call mine MS graph test and I'll show you why later. And then obviously you have to assign it to a group. Within this group I have my test systems. So I've already created this package and I've already deployed it. So my test machine that I'm on right here actually has it installed. <clears throat> Once it's been installed what you could then do is you come to Devices, Configuration. I've already created two different BIOS configurations. One for NumLocks equals Disabled and one for Fastboot equals Minimal. But you say Create New Policy. You want Windows 10 or later. You want to say Template, BIOS Configurations and Other Settings. And we hit Create. We give it a name, we say next, the hardware is Dell, and then you point it to a CCTK file that you have created with Dell command configure. So I could come in here and say enable express charge, for example. <clears throat> It's going to upload this, but the important thing we need to specify or pay attention to is this. Disable per device BIOS password protection. This is the key to this whole tool right here. If I pick yes, it's just going to make the BIOS change. If you select no, it's going to make the BIOS change but it's also going to randomly generate a BIOS password. And this is the setup password, the admin password. It's not the hard drive password, it's not the system password. This is the password required when you F2 go into the BIOS and you want to make a change, you have to unlock it. It creates a randomly generated password. And what is very cool about this tool I'm going to cancel out of this since I already have two packages created right here and here. But what is amazing about this tool is if I click on my fast boot equals minimal, I have the disable per device BIOS password protection set to no. 
<clears throat> so once it ran and I synced my machine, which of course takes a bit of time in Intune, I rebooted, I pressed F2, I went into my BIOS, and sure enough, I had an admin password set, and I did not know what it is. What we've done working with Microsoft is we've incorporated this tool with Microsoft Graph. And Microsoft Graph allows you to get the BIOS passwords. So if you come to developer.microsoft.com, Graph, Graph Explorer, and if you change, you have to change it to beta, but this is the path. So you could maybe take a screenshot of that or write it down. <clears throat> Device management forward slash hardware password info, which is in the documentation for the tool. But if I say run query, this is my machine. And that right there is my BIOS password. When I rebooted, pressed F2, and I wanted to make a BIOS change, I clicked unlock. I typed that in, and sure enough, it unlocked my BIOS password. I was hoping it would show me the clear text of the BIOS password that I personally set. In my lab, every single password is Dell123 with a capital D. Everything's Dell123. I was hoping it would show me that, but it doesn't. It creates its own, and then through Microsoft Graph, you could actually view that. And you'll notice that the current password and the last one in the list are the same. And the reason why that is, this particular package, fastboot equals minimal, the disable per device BIOS password protection is set to no. So therefore it generated the random BIOS password. I then created a second package for numwox equals disabled and this one, it's set to yes. And I pushed this out after I pushed out the first one. I still have a BIOS password. So if I reboot, press F2 and go in there, I still have a BIOS password. So it logs that. It says, here's the current one, and that's also the last one. Because this, when I pushed out the very first package, that wasn't there. It only had the current password. The last one used to be this. But when I pushed out a second package that made another BIOS change, it still maintained the password because it was set like that. And what's interesting about this is if we come back in here, if I change what I'm pushing, let, let's say I delete this one, or I go back in and I change it to yes right here and I push it back out then it actually wipes the local BIOS password out and then it would say current password would be blank and then it would only list this at the bottom so it could enable it or disable it and I found this out entirely by mistake I created my first package that you know made a BIOS change I pushed it out I rebooted went into F2 and I noticed I actually have an admin password set and I don't know what it is. So I had to figure out how on earth did that happen. And this is how it happens. So it's a very, very good tool. If you come here and click, click get started, there's very good documentation on all this that walks you through, you know, much of what I've just said. So I hope this has been beneficial and you're able to use it.